SmartSuite just unveiled a ton of new updates with their interactive dashboards. But there is one feature that I've been so excited to get my hands on, and I'm really excited to show you this today. Now, unfortunately, if I were to put a label on this, it sounds really technical and boring. It's something like, you can have dependent record selectors, or you can chain record selectors. But I want to show you how this is so cool and how we're using it with our clients to really transform the way that they have their workflows set up so that it's much more akin to their business process as opposed to just entering data and clicking in a bunch of different grids. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from automationhelpers.com and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. Now, if you haven't used SmartSuite before, you can use the affiliate link in the description below. The awesome part about this feature that I'm showing you today is it's included in all the plans, including the free plan. So some of you might not know this about SmartSuite. One of the really cool features that we have is the ability to take different tables in different solutions and link them, connect them together from wherever we're at. So right now you can see I've got a handful of different solutions here. One, I've got CRM. So I've got tables like our accounts and contacts and opportunities. And then I've got project management where I have things like projects and tasks and invoices. And so what we're able to do is we're able to connect all this information together. And that's what we're going to do. So I actually have a dashboards solution here and I'm using this just to store this dashboard and just to show you how we can link this data from different places. Now, the point of this video isn't simply that we're just linking data together. That's cool, but that's old news by now. Instead, we're gonna show you how we can actually chain these different selectors together to create a really great experience. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click this create new view in the lower left hand corner. From here, I'm gonna scroll down and click on dashboard. We'll give this dashboard a name like invoices. And then at this point, I need to add my first widget. And the widget that we're going to be using is called the record selector. So we've got our record selector that we can click on. I'm gonna change this name just to select account. And instead of our source being just this blank table that I have, this is where I can choose data from our different solutions. So first we're gonna choose from our CRM. We're gonna point this at our accounts so that we'll see a list of accounts and then I'm going to add this widget. So at this point, this is pretty simple. I can change the size of this because we don't need to be huge. But now I've got this drop down of all my accounts. Well, the next thing we wanna do is we have accounts and then we have projects for each of those accounts and then each project might have multiple invoices. And so what we're trying to do is chain these together so we can have accounts and then see only the projects for that particular account. And then we can see only the invoices for that particular project. That's the goal of being able to chain these selectors together. So I have this first one, no special business logic or anything with that. I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this by duplicating the widget, or you could add a new widget and we could start from there. I'll change this to select project and duplicate it. So now let's go into edit our settings. You can see we've got the title up here. And when we click into the source, you might think, okay, well now we're going to go ahead and choose our project management and choose our projects from there. But the thing that we can do is we can actually click on the record selector, that previous step that we called the select account. I can choose this as my actual data source. And then from here, once they've selected that account, which record type are we showing? Well, in that case, now we're choosing from our various linked relationships. So in this case, we are going to choose our projects to be able to display here. So let's go ahead and save this and I'll move this up here and let's take a look at how this works. So from here, we can choose our account, a and Industries, and then now my projects are available and there's only that one HR automation versus if we choose automation helpers and now we have a few different projects to choose from. So we've got now this project selector is dependent on the account selector. And we can keep doing this if we want to. So back to our use case, we talked about we wanted to be able to see the invoices for the projects for that account. And so the next part we might want to do is add a widget and maybe we'd search for a grid view, title this invoices. And then our source is going to be again, the selector, not this time for the select account. Instead, we're going to do the select project. And from here, we'll choose the link to the invoices. So let's go ahead and add that widget. And you can see this muddied up our order a little bit. So we'll just change this around. We've got our select account, select project, and we've got our invoices. Maybe we wanna make this full width here. So if we're looking at automation helpers, we have no invoices for document generation, but what if we click on initial implementation? There you go, we've got our invoices. If I choose a different account like that a and Industries, HR automation, now I can see my invoices there. So you can see how we can really set up these nice selectors to be able to filter on the relevant information 
be able to chain these together. Now, some of you might be saying, yeah, but I don't actually want to have this list, this grid of all these invoices. I want to be able to easily drill into one. And certainly you could do something like just expand the record if you want to see the details for that particular invoice. But we have another way we could handle this instead. So I'm going to actually remove this particular widget. And instead, we're going to add one more selector here. So let me go ahead and duplicate this one again. We'll change it to select invoice. I'll move this up here. And now you can guess what we're probably going to do. Once we click in here, now we're going to say select invoice. And our source here is going to be the select project. And from here, we're going to take the link to invoices. Now, I might want to change this style a little bit to give some more information. So let me go over to style and we'll change this to a list. And this is going to now make them visibly present on the page. And then we'll click on general again. And I want to change what this looks like. So let's change our selection drop down, our fields to display. And I want to be able to put the invoiced amount on here just so we have a little bit more context. So that looks good. I'm going to leave that. So now I've got my select account, select project. And because this is going to be larger on the screen, let's actually move it back over here again, maybe expand that. And now we want to show the details for that one particular invoice. So if we click on this one, we want to view just that invoice or this one, we just want to view that particular invoice from September 19th. So let's add another widget. And this one, we're going to search for record details. We'll change this to invoice details. And then my source, is going to be the select invoice. So this chaining works not just for the selectors themselves, but you can have these other widgets that actually connect to the selectors. So we're selecting the invoice and then I'm going to go to fields. We'd probably wanna make this look pretty and add a whole bunch of fields, but I'm just gonna add a couple for an example. So I'll add our invoice date and then let's actually add the specific invoice lines themselves. So that's kinda of cool. We can add even our linked records here and then let's fix the display of some of these other items. So we're gonna have this come up to the top and then I'm gonna shift this over. There we go. So this looks nicer. We've got that select account, select project, select the invoice, and now view the line items for that invoice. So again, if I click on automation helpers, initial implementation on this invoice, it updates it so I can see the line items. If I go back to A&P Industries, a HR automation, our A&P Industries, and it looks like we don't have any line items in this case. But that way, it's really easy to be able to take a look at all the invoices, including the details that we have for that specific invoice. So I hope this was helpful to see just how powerful some of these new features are around SmartSuite's dashboards. Next week, we're going to be coming out with a longer video about more of the features. And I just want to dive into this one today because we're already using this with clients to really change how their workflows operate today. If you have any questions or you need help with your own automations, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.